husband and wife team of Frank and Lillian Gilbreth are best known for their use of motion studies to simplify work but they also made significant contributions to the employment of disabled workers and to the field of industrial psychology. Like Taylor, their early experiences significantly shaped their interests and contributions to management. Motion study is breaking each task down into its separate motions and then eliminating those that are unnecessary or repetitive. Though admitted to MIT, Frank Gilbreth began his career as an apprentice bricklayer. While learning the trade, he noticed that bricklayers used three different sets of motions, one to teach others how to lay bricks, a second to work at a slow pace, and a third to work at a fast pace. Wondering which was best, he studied the various approaches and began eliminating unnecessary motions. For example, by designing a stand that could be raised to waist height, he eliminated the need to bend over to pick up each brick. Turning to grab a brick was faster and easier than bending down. By having lower paid workers place all the bricks with their most attractive side up, bricklayers didn't waste time turning a brick over to find it. By mixing a more consistent mortar, bricklayers no longer had to tap each brick numerous times to put it in the right position. Together, Gilbreth's improvement raised productivity from 120 to 350 bricks per hour and from 1,000 bricks per day to 2,700 bricks per day. As a result of his experience with bricklaying, Gilbreth and his wife Lillian developed a long-term interest in using motion study to simplify work, improve productivity, and reduce the level of effort required to safely perform a job. Indeed, Frank Gilbreth said, the greatest waste in the world comes from needless, ill-directed, and ineffective motions. Motion study broke down each task or job into separate motions and then eliminated those that were unnecessary or repetitive. Because many motions were completed very quickly, the Gilbreths used motion picture films, then a relatively new technology to analyze jobs. Most film cameras at the time were hand-cranked and thus variable in their film speed, so Frank invented the micrometer, a large clock that could record time up to one-half one-thousandth of a second. By placing the micrometer next to the worker in the camera's field of vision and attaching a flashing strobe light to the worker's hand to better identify the direction and sequence of key movements, the Gilbreths could use the film to detect and precisely time even the slightest, fastest movements. Motion study typically yielded production increases of 25 to 300 percent. Taylor also strove to simplify work, but he did so by managing time rather than motion as the Gilbreths did. Taylor developed time study to put an end to soldiering and to determine what could be considered a fair day's work. Time study worked by timing how long it took a first-class man to complete each part of his job. A standard time was established after allowing for rest periods. A worker's pay would increase or decrease depending on whether the worker exceeded or fell below that standard. Lillian Gilbreth was an important contributor to management in her own right. She was the first woman to receive a PhD in industrial psychology, as well as the first woman to become a member of the Society of Industrial Engineers and the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. When Frank died in 1924, she continued the work of their management consulting company, which they shared for over a dozen years. Lillian, who was concerned with the human side of work, was one of the first contributors to industrial psychology, originating ways to improve office communication, incentive programs, job satisfaction, and management training. Her work also convinced the government to enact laws regarding workplace safety, ergonomics, and child labor.